What's going to tell Um, so, as both the um, two previous speakers have uh, said, uh, this is a very difficult decision for members. <coughs> it is difficult uh, because it involves the balancing of uh, conflicting points of view, often uh, passionately held, uh, each of which uh, can uh, reasonably be held. Uh, the inquiry has started. And in principle, everyone wants it uh, to be finished. Everyone empathizes with the victims of abuse. No one wants to see any uh, uh, wrongdoing covered up. Some of us would like to see a more balanced account uh, than has so far emerged uh, come into the light. On the other hand, I have no doubt that the public does not want to see tens of millions of pounds of taxpayers' money spent on bringing the inquiry to a conclusion. If it could have been done for six million pounds, it would have been supported, even though we have so many pressing financial problems on the horizon. <coughs> so I have a personal reason for wanting to see the inquiry fully concluded. Uh, paragraph 13 of the Terms of Reference provides that the panel should seek to establish whether those responsible for deciding on which cases to prosecute took a professional approach and whether the process was free from political or other interference at any level. I was a law officer between 1975 and 1994. I hope that I always took a professional approach and I can categorically say that I never permitted any political or other interference in the prosecution process. If there, if there were the slightest evidence that I had, uh, I should have been unfit to hold office. Uh, could I ask uh, the quiet in the public gallery, please? However, I accept in the outcome of the inquiry, and I'm not therefore going to vote on the opposition, and I will abstain. I am, however, going to speak, and members, knowing of my interest, uh, will give my words such weight as they think fit. Uh, some have said that I have always been opposed to this inquiry, and it is true that I have always been opposed to an inquiry with terms of reference as absurdly wide as these. I did not vote on Projet 118. <coughs> Uh, when it was adopted by the Assembly. I was opposed to it because I knew that the costs were likely to be uncontrollable and huge. I knew that from experience. In a large country like the United Kingdom, uh, you can swallow such expense because it is a minuscule fraction of public expenditure. But that is not the case in Jersey. The uh, Chief Minister recently uh, reminded me that in discussion before Projet 118 was lodged uh, in 2012 uh, when we had been <coughs> advised that the costs of the inquiry uh, would be no more than six million pounds I predicted that there would be no change from 20 million pounds and that has proved to be correct now that we are all better informed about the scale of the task laid down in the terms of reference, my view has changed and I should be surprised if the final cost was much less than 50 million pounds. Um, why do I say that? Um, not to uh, frighten people, there are several reasons. First, experience has shown that the panel's predictions are unreliable. In June 2014, uh, they told the Chief Minister and Senator Ozef that they were confident that £6 million was sufficient and indeed generous. Within a few months, they realised that they were wrong. The panel's estimate of their own costs uh, was revised. Uh, in uh, October 2014, it went from £6 million to £7.8 million. In November 2014 to £8.8 .8 in December to 11.3 million, 
and in February to 13.7 million. Uh, with that record, it is difficult to be confident that the panel's February prediction is uh, the final one. When you add in the costs of the state's lawyers and the lawyers for the police, the total is over 20 million pounds. And that ignores the costs of the law officers, and their external advisers, and the senior civil servants in several departments whose expensive time is being consumed. Secondly, although I may appear to have been critical of the panel's forecasting, my real criticism is directed at this assembly, at us and those who advise us. The terms of reference are so extensive and <coughs> cover such a length of time that uh, the numbers of potentially relevant documents is colossal. The panel is estimating cost on the basis of their knowledge at any given time. And that knowledge changes. There are, I understand, nearly a million documents in the law officers department. A first trawl of the health department's database revealed that 6.5 million documents were caught by the terms of reference. Of course, when they are examined, uh, not all will be relevant. But um, as the uh, Chief Minister states in his uh, report, it is almost uh, inevitable uh, that further lines of inquiry uh, will emerge uh, during the course of the next uh, phases, uh, which will mean that the costs uh, uh, will rise. None of us has any real idea of how long uh, the inquiry will take. Uh, originally it was to take 12 months and finish in June uh, 2015. That was progressively extended to November 2015, July 2016, October 2016, and now December 2016. And every extra month adds nearly a million pounds to the bill. Thirdly, the solicitors appointed to the inquiry are experienced in the conduct of UK inquiries. They were involved in the Bloody Sunday inquiry and the West Staffordshire inquiry. They have applied UK protocols to this uh, inquiry. They are not applying what I would describe as a sensible, focused approach appropriate to the size of this jurisdiction. One example is the protocol on the redaction of documents which required the state's lawyers and the solicitors to the inquiry to redact or edit out uh, irrelevant material, for example, the names of innocent third parties unconnected with the uh, inquiry. Only after that, process of redaction was done, did the inquiry solicitors consider what documents they actually wanted to use. Um, and that was usually only about 10%. 90% of these carefully redacted documents went into the bid, never to be seen again. This happened for nine months, wasting huge amounts of legal time and money. The state's lawyers complained regularly but to no effect until they demanded a public hearing before the panel on the 15th of October 2014. The panel stated that a new redaction protocol would be coming out within a week. But in fact, it was uh, not until five months later, in March of this year, that the new protocol came into effect. The problem is that the solicitors to the inquiry have no real client to whom they are accountable. There is no incentive to be efficient and to have regard to the cost. Fourthly, the panel itself does not give me much comfort that cost is a material factor. The Treasury Minister asked uh, in writing for, and I quote, an explanation in as much detail as possible of the currently estimated costs for completing the work. Uh, the response uh, in the Chief Minister's report was that public inquiries are, as you will be aware, inevitably expensive if matters are to be fully addressed. And then we remain fully committed uh, to examining how costs can be contained while not compromising our duty to act independently and to give you a full report in accordance with our terms 
of reference. It's an understandable response from the panel. They are concerned with getting to the truth, but frankly, they are not concerned with cost. I doubt that the new procedural protocols, if they are put in place uh, following the Chief Minister's proposition, will have any significant effect upon cost. I've said that I should be surprised if the final cost were less than £50 million. Pounds. I accept entirely that that is a guesstimate. The truth is that we just do not know how much the inquiry will cost if it continues. I'm afraid that I respectively, respectfully disagree with the Chief Minister. Um, it is the proverbial blank cheque. Uh, the amount on the cheque is blank. In our private lives, we would not take a risk of that kind. And uh, I suggest that we should not do it with taxpayers' money either. Some members um, have said to me with an air of hopelessness that we have got to do it. But I think it is worth asking the question, why? What are the arguments for continuing? Uh, let's identify them. The abuse of children, whether physical or emotional, is one of the worst crimes in the book. No member would say otherwise. I was opposed to the Committee of Inquiry with these terms of reference, but I supported uh, some form of Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which would give victims the opportunity to be heard and help them to try to come to terms with horrible experiences of the past. Now, that opportunity has, in fact, been given. Uh, victims um, have been heard and uh, taken seriously by a sympathetic and compassionate panel which is entirely as uh, it should be. And I'm sure that coming forward to give evidence was an act of considerable courage for a number of the victims. If this uh, inquiry is to be curtailed this is the appropriate and indeed the only time to do it because one of the major purposes of the inquiry to give victims the opportunity to be heard will have been fulfilled. Is it unfair on the alleged abusers that they should not have the opportunity to respond to allegations publicly made against them? Yes, of course it is unfair. But unfairness is inherent in an inquiry of this kind. There will be no resolution of uh, disputed accounts. Some abusers may, some alleged abusers, uh, may be disappointed at the inability to respond before the panel. But the real point is uh, that um, alleged abusers are innocent in the eyes of the law. It is a fundamental principle of our Constitution that a person is innocent until he has been proved guilty in a court of law. They have nothing to prove. The media could indeed mitigate part of the injustice of hearing only one side of the story by publishing the statements of the alleged abusers if they were minded to do so. And the alleged abusers wanted to ask for that. It is um, unfair to the families of deceased individuals that the reputations of their relatives should be attacked. There can be no response because the man is dead. <coughs> I knew Senator Wilfred Kruczewski. I do not know whether he was guilty of any crime. I do know that some of the things alleged against him were physically impossible and that uh, if uh, memory serves, the original allegations were not specifically made against uh, Krzyzewski. It needed the news of the world to speculate <coughs> that he was the offender. I'm afraid that unfairness is part and parcel of an inquiry of this kind. But the unfairness to alleged uh, offenders, abusers, has to be balanced against the unfairness to the rest of the population 
of paying huge sums of their money uh, to lawyers. And then some members will say that we will suffer reputational damage. People will say that we have something to hide. Just as uh, the truth was about to emerge, uh, the inquiry is brought to a halt. And I have several answers to that. The first is that it is not true. All the allegations have been made and published. Nothing is secret. All the evidence is on the inquiry website. I think it is true to say that after a year of taking evidence, nothing uh, new has emerged that was not known at the end of the Operation Rectangle <coughs> investigation. If I am wrong, then any uh, new evidence will be investigated by the police and any perpetrator, if the evidence is strong enough, will be prosecuted. I have not heard any evidence of government corruption. I suspect that there were cover-ups in the sense that some abusers, once uh, detected, were allowed to move on without their offending being reported by the institutions to the police. Thirty years ago, that was what often happened, we know, in England, Ireland and Australia. And I should be surprised if it did not happen here. It happened in the Catholic, Catholic and Anglican churches and in schools and institutions up and down the country. It was terribly wrong, uh, but it happened. And I don't need to pay vast sums of money to learn that the same thing happened in Jersey. The second answer to the reputational concern is that uh, we should get things in proportion. And Constable St. Martin, I think also the Deputy of St. Martin, uh, mentioned this uh, too. If this situation were transposed to the United Kingdom, the United Kingdom government, I am sure, would not think that it was in the public interest to continue the inquiry. There was outrage in London when the Bloody Sunday inquiry was estimated to have cost four pounds for every person in the United Kingdom. At 25 million pounds, the cost of our inquiry to every man, woman and child in Jersey uh, would be 250 pounds. The equivalent cost in the United Kingdom would be 15 billion pounds. If my 50 million pound estimate is right, the figure is a staggering 30 billion pounds. Would the UK government allow such spending of taxpayers' money on a public inquiry? I do not think so. The third answer is that whatever happens to our inquiry, there will be reputational flack. I understand that the former Deputy Police Chief has recently filed an 80-page uh, memorandum with the inquiry, and I think that we can be fairly sure that that would provide much uh, lurid material for the media, which neither he nor they would be likely to publish without the protection of a committee of inquiry. I think that we have to be prepared to face down wild and inaccurate headlines in the tabloid media. I do not agree with the Constable of St. Martin, um, and I think that we should not allow government policy to be dictated <coughs> by a fear of what the media might say. We have done our best. We have been transparent. We have compensated the victims generously, even if, sadly, more money has gone to the lawyers than to the victims. <coughs> we were misled into thinking that the inquiry would cost us six million pounds. We were wrong. Uh, it would cost vastly more than that. Our problem actually is that we do not have the statutory framework that exists uh, in the United Kingdom and which enables protocols to be laid down <coughs> by ministers and costs uh, control. Uh, they are non-existent in Jersey. We do not have a Tribunals and Inquiries Act. 
I accept that if the inquiry is brought to a close at this stage, constitutional issues might follow. The Home Secretary in the United Kingdom has not extended the ambit of the English inquiry to Jersey because of the Oldham uh, inquiry here. She might review that decision if our inquiry is halted. For my part, I would find it entirely reasonable if uh, lines of inquiry in England, for example, in relation to uh, Jimmy Savile, led to inquiries being followed up uh, in Jersey. Uh, if the uh, in the uh, followed up in Jersey by the uh, either the English, indeed, or the Scottish or the Irish uh, inquiries, uh, I don't find that constitutionally objectionable. And I would say that we should do what we can to help by making available <coughs> relevant documentation that is not already in the public domain. Um, so I have uh, one last point to make. The, this inquiry cannot uh, continue without pondering uh, for the first time since its establishment in 1986, the uh, Strategic Reserve Fund. In a sense, that makes it too easy. If we had to make a choice between £40 million for a new Kennevay school, uh, for example, and continuing the inquiry, that might make it a bit more difficult. But there is no other readily accessible money, and the only option is the strategic reserve. So the proposition asks the Treasury Minister to uh, bring forward a proposition to amend the policy in relation to the strategic reserve and to draw down £14 million. Pounds. As a matter of law, only he can bring forward such a proposition. I don't think that members should put the Treasury Minister in such a position. He knows that once the dam is breached, it is so much <coughs> easier for money to flow out. Once the £14 million pounds is uh, exhausted, he will have to accede to a request for a further £10 million or £20 million, uh, if it is made, and so on. The Treasury Minister is a prudent man. He knows that the Strategic Reserve Fund is what gives the island financial stability and international credibility. We face uh, challenging times in the next uh, two to three years. We may need our Strategic <coughs> Reserve Fund because rainy days are upon us. We certainly do need it for the new hospital because if we build on a single site, as the Minister wishes to do, it will be significantly more expensive than the estimate so far made public. It would take courage sir, to reject uh, this proposition, uh, but uh, in my view it is the right and responsible thing to do. There would be disappointment for some victims, and I am very sorry about that. But we uh, owe a duty to other vulnerable groups too, the disabled and the mentally ill, to take but two examples. And only a week ago, there was a headline in the newspaper, tears over scale of child sexual exploitation, when the police expressed their serious concerns about the grooming and sexual manipulation of children. What is uh, more important? Do we continue uh, to uh, uh, apply our financial resources looking backwards or do we concentrate on the present and the future? We cannot do everything. I think, sir, that we should draw a line in the sand.